Press that button. I dare you not to press that button. I mean the subscribe button, the like button, the bell button, and all those other follow buttons. I just want to remind you again, go to our Telegram channel. Everything that we talk about here is provided there as a resource. So you can read up on all those articles and other fascinating things. We actually put a lot more stuff there that we talk about so you can be part of our community and share our own interest and share with your communities and spread the good word and news. And we're not here to promote Telegram itself, but it seems like to be a convenient resource for us. Uh, Glenn, how are you doing today? Uh, and actually, welcome to Alex Sass Show here at the Glenn Zone with Glenn Herring. Glenn Herring, how are you, my friend? Oh, very good. Thank you, brother. I'm uh, doing excellent. Uh, we're going to put out a nice show today, a little bit of uh, awakening that's sadly needed. This morning, it looks like somebody blew up the Kokovka Dam in southern what is going Ukraine. On? The rushing wall of water wiped out entire villages, destroyed a critical hydropower plant, and as of tonight, puts the largest nuclear reactor in Europe in danger of melting down. So if this was intentional, it was not a military tactic. It was an act of terrorism. Whoopi Goldberg did it. Who did it? Well, let's see. The Kokovka Dam was effectively Russian. It was built by the Russian government. It currently sits in Russian-controlled territory. The dam's reservoir supplies water to Crimea, which has been, for the last 240 years, home of the Russian Black How dare he say that? Yeah, how dare he say the <laughs> truth? Right? See, fleet. Blowing up the dam may be bad for Ukraine, but it hurts Russia more. And for precisely that reason, the Ukrainian government has considered destroying it. In December, the Washington Post quoted a Ukrainian general saying his men had fired American-made rockets at the dam's floodgate as a test strike. So really, once the facts start coming in, it becomes much less of a mystery what might have happened to the dam. Any fair person would conclude that the Ukrainians probably blew it up just as you would assume they blew up Nord Stream, the Russian natural gas pipeline, last fall. No. No, that could be the <laughs> Anglo-Americans. Yeah, through no, Ukraine. But the, yeah, but yeah, now Ukraine is a fall guy. They're preparing the fall guy. And in fact, the Ukrainians... And I think that's why actually Tucker, that's one of the Tucker's... I think that's one of his responsibilities now to usher in the fall of the Ukraine. I think that's what he is. And watch, um, I haven't seen the whole thing, but I'm sure he's going to throw Zelensky under the bus. did do that, as we now know. It's not like Vladimir Putin is anxious to wage war on himself. Oh, but that's where you're wrong, Mr. and Mrs. Cable News consumer. Vladimir Putin is exactly that sort of man, the sort of man who'd shoot himself to death in order to annoy you. We know this. I mean, but wait, he, okay, is a counterpoint to this. You know, a lot of people couldn't actually uh, fathom that 9-11 attack were caused by the powers to be, you know, BlackRock and Vanguards and the industrial military complex would attack itself, so to speak. Uh, so it's not far-fetched. There, there's some theories that Putin done this to himself during Chechen war with some buildings. There were some residential buildings that were brought down uh, in the terrorist attacks in Moscow, uh, you know, 15 years ago or so maybe more at this point, uh, maybe 20 years ago. So it is possible that uh, Russia would attack itself. <laughs> yeah, Putin is being vilified, the same thing as Trump was vilified. Uh, the Russian collusion, proven not true. In Canada, Trudeau and the liberals with the China collusion going to be proven to be true. From the American media, which wasted no time this morning in accusing the Russians of sabotaging their own infrastructure. Bill Kristol, the man who once told us that Saddam Hussein was responsible for 9-11, immediately denounced Putin as a war criminal and even more savagely compared him to Donald Trump. The rest of the pundit class... <laughs> Glenn, did you see that video first? Did you Twitter. Tell us <laughs> Tucker and Twitter and the G-Man together. You know what I mean? Yeah, they're stealing your thunder, but you're not, you know. ...made similar clearly coordinated noises. Putin did it! Putin did it! And their reasoning was simple. 
Putin is evil, and evil people do evil things purely for the dark joy of being evil. Bill Gates. In this specific case, Putin attacked himself, which is the most evil thing you can do, <laughs> and therefore perfectly in character for a man that evil. That was their explanation. No one who's paid to... And he makes a lot of sense on, with the nonsense of the uh, legacy media. I remember uh, back in the times of the Russian collusion just started, you know, I was working on the radio. I had a show, Hams Radio Hum So Far, and I had call-ins. It's like, well, Putin did it. You know, we had all those 17 intelligence agencies now, you know, talking about it, and they have some kind of proof and all this other stuff. But now... And it was not, and it seems like the whole, um, you know, all of the legacy media, in, including here in Canada, uh, were just yes men to that story. But the shift is the fact that people like Tucker Carlson, you know, and the platform like Twitter, right away, the same day or the next day, uh, opening eyes to the audience and say like, no, 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 don't listen to this garbage. This seems to be a false flag. This does this mean that we are winning, and by we you mean like the people that start to understand all of this is an illusion, and it's all by design. Well, Trump, uh, you know all the people who were uh, becoming human parrots because they were just uh, regurgitating what the mainstream media was was telling them. Uh, they're the ones who were being exposed, and they're the ones who are e or whose egos are going to get hit. And then they're really going to have a distrust for everything. Unless they are so far gone that they turn into a narcissist and then they'll never admit it. You'll just go into denial, right? And you continue to deny it because it's too shameful to be recognized as the person who has been proven wrong, right? A lot of them will still continue to stick with the guns. Uh, you know, science changes politics. You know, like you don't know any better. It's all fake, right? It's easier to fool people than to convince them that they've been fooled. We've said that about five times on the show, and it's people are going to be repeating that now. Are going to say, "Yeah, they were right on." You mean like five thousand times? Cover on the these show. things seem to entertain even the possibility it could have been Ukrainians who did it. No chance of that. Ukraine, as you may have heard, is led by a man called Zelensky. And we can say for a dead certain fact that he was not involved. He couldn't have been. Zelensky is too decent for terrorism. Yeah. yeah. Now, you see him on television, and it's true you might form a different impression. Sweaty and rat-like, a comedian turned oligarch, a persecutor of Christians, a friend of BlackRock. But don't believe your own eyes. Actually, Mr. Zelensky is a very good man. The best, really. As George W. Bush once noted, he is our generation's Winston Churchill. <laughs> wow. Yeah. And, and brothers and sisters, we're not here to promote the Taka Twitter show beyond what we already did. You can watch the rest of it on Twitter. Uh, just follow Alex Sass show on Twitter too. This is where we present as well if you do go on Twitter. But as you can see, uh, Tucker is uh, making his comeback. And uh, we are very happy for Tucker, aren't we, Glenn? Yeah, happy for Tucker, but I just wanted to uh, reiterate that that Zelensky guy, you know, he always comes out trying to be a, 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 a hard speaker, a tough looking, you know, wearing like a military type garb, uh, he shows up with uh, meeting heads of state who are all dressed in suits and he's in that same, you know, part that he's playing as always a real tough guy. Listen, people, we know he's not a tough guy, okay? This, this is the guy who will have a nervous breakdown for a hangnail or a splinter. Uh, and well, actually, I don't know exactly what his story is all about, but he's, he, is, do you think he's going to be a fall guy? Do you think he's going to, is there a chance for his retirement versus imprisonment or death, most likely? Like, does he know, is, maybe that's why he's on drugs all the time, because he knows he, uh, this is it, there's no way out? Well, you know what? For that one person to have been instrumental in causing so many other deaths and inconveniences and problems in the world, he's just one of the people that they're using. In other words, he was compromised a long time ago, and he's just trying to minimize what you just said, the negative effect he's going to have when all this proverbial stuff hits the fan, which it's already starting to, by the way. Uh, so, brothers and sisters, so you see the scope of the terroristic act that has happened. Uh, this is the before picture. 
uh, of uh, what uh, the region looked like before the dam was brought down. And, and this is the after picture. By the way, that uh, in the article, in this article, which I'm not going to read, it does say that uh, beyond this dam being brought down via whatever the explosions, there also the dam above, you know, up the stream, they're still controlled by Ukrainian uh, side. They opened up the flow there to ca cause even more distraction. And you can see the difference. So a lot of people got misplaced. A, a lot of territory got flooded and p property ruined. The, those people already afflicted by the war and being exp this is horrible. I can't. I can't imagine what those people have been going through for the past how many years. Um, and um, brothers and sisters, we never advocate here for war. We never advocate here for murder of our brothers and sisters. Sisters. So let's pray for them. Let's pray for that conflict to be over soon, and that uh, you know evil forces, industrial military complexes, and bankers, and you know black rocks and vanguards. They got their comeuppings, and they probably will. Um, you know, God is great, <laughs> and God is fair, and punishment is coming. Uh, Glenn, let's get to the um, next story. Uh, Gonzalo, well, it's still a Ukrainian story. Gonzalo Lear, we haven't heard from him in a while because we covered it here on the news. He has been arrested. He has been arrested a few weeks back by the Ukrainian forces. Do you Do you remember what he was arrested for? Yeah, he's an American who I think he married a Ukrainian girl. He's living in Ukraine, and he was uh, using his uh, media channel to come out as a staunch, uh, staunchly against Zelensky and what's been going on in Ukraine. And he's been giving uh, different points of view than what we're subjected to here in the Western media. And because of that, it looks like they came knocking on his door and put him in some uh, some cell. Yeah, and here's uh, some of the things that he talks about it. Uh, like, we're going to play it just in a second. Either by putting weapons in their hands that they are incapable of, of competently handling, or else putting heavy weaponry in civilian population zones. He's talking about Ukrainian leaders. So that leaders. the Russians inadvertently will kill some civilian... And it will lead to a great photo op that will benefit the Zelensky regime. That is evil. It's as simple as that. And I am in Ukraine right now under the authority of the Zelensky regime, a regime that consistently persecutes any critic of it. And I am a foreigner in this country. And I'm saying this publicly and I don't give a who sees it and if the Zelensky re regime sees this and arrests me and throws me God knows where well then you know and I don't give a f because you have to call out evil when you see it and this is fucking evil simple as that so Glenn was it a public stunt or is, is he like because he you know he is a personality isn't he like he is a, he's been known for the red he was a red pill man was teaching man you know they call him chauvinist or whatever they call him right misogynist, misogynist. Yeah. maybe he's just taking a page out of the uh, andrew tate book and if it was a stunt well he's going to get a lot of airtime now when 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 he does get out or whatever well uh, american government is aware of him uh, being arrested or detained in Ukraine. And um, we just heard Tucker Carlson talking and describing. And here on the show, we talk about it all the time, you know, about uh, Canadian government and American government. The reason, one of the reasons for the why they're maintaining the conflict there is to protect the Western democracy, the, the Western way of life. And we covered it here, and we heard Tucker say that there's zero democracy, and that's what uh, Gonzalo Lira was screaming about, how evil that regime actually really is. And, you know, they're going to say he's a Putin shield, and, of course, this is what it's, uh, this is about. Uh, however, remember we had this story covering a basketball player. What was her name? Griner. Uh, Brittany Griner. Brittany Griner. She was recovered, and she was exchanged for... Uh, uh, arms dealer that was selling a whole bunch of arms 
Um, so the this actually this question has been brought up in the Senate and uh, some uh, some people asking what's the next movement is and State Department is aware of this and. Thanks, uh, Liam Cosgrove with Epic Times. Um, so this was a couple weeks ago, but I haven't seen an official statement on it. Um, a uh oh. Citizen who was residing in Ukraine has been arrested, and that um, you know he was a California-born man. He was in the past like a business insider contributor. And he had a YouTube channel. He was an outspoken critic of Zelensky's regime. Um, the Ukrainian SBU released a press release saying he was arrested for justifying Putin's invasion. So um, ultimately, it added up to speech. And uh, I spoke with Congressman Ted Lieu, Democrat, and he said he urges the State Department to engage its authorities to, you know, work out some sort of negotiation to get him released. So, are you guys aware of this? How do we feel about our allies? You know detaining u.s citizens for speech abroad um so we, uh, i will say in general that uh, uh, we're aware uh, of the report uh, 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 um, we obviously support the the exercise of freedom of speech anywhere in the world and i'll leave no it at that. Yeah. oh to, you leave it at that to get him released I, i'm gonna leave my comments uh, uh where i just where i just left them so hold on so he's he just said i'm gonna support him on freedom of speech but he didn't actually answer the he didn't answer the question a human turtle he just put his head in the shell uh, but this seems like to be an exercise that uh, all of the people that go on the podium and the State Department, you know, Kirby, you know what Kirby said about uh, um, the Kahovka incident that uh, Tucker just spoke about for a while? I mean, he's, uh, you know, that's the guy that talks out of the side of his mouth. Does it seem believable to you that uh, Russia would destroy a dam and flood ethnic Russian villages and cut off the water supply to? Uh, Crimea. I mean, that doesn't seem logical. It seems about a, as logical as blowing up one's own pipeline, doesn't it? We've come to no conclusions on this. We're working with the Ukrainians. We'll try to get as much information as we can. <laughs> nervous, nervous. <laughs> yeah, he he seemed a bit nervous. But uh, what else can he say? He can't say nothing about this, right? Um, do, also, did I don't know if you, brother and sister, if you watch this, it's kind of circulating in the in the socials. I don't really speak Spanish. I know, Glenn, you do a little bit that uh, there were, there's a, a video circulating of Ukrainian weapons uh, in possession by, well, not Ukrainian weapons, but the weapons that were meant to be um, used in Ukraine to kill the Russians or to protect the Ukraine. Uh, they are uh, actually circulating now in uh, Mexican cartels. <laughs> Did you see that video? <laughs> es un sueto más importante, a very important subject. Yeah, I, I'm not necessarily going to play the sound because I, I don't speak, uh, I don't speak uh, any uh, Spanish. Um, but there's a video, look, of this guy, whatever that is. That's like that. That's an anti-tank missile or something. Like this. <laughs> and uh, another one. And this is clearly a conflict weapons from from that region. So we, you know, we spoke about it for weeks now that those weapons never really make it. And it's just a big laundering hole. Uh, and it, it's not just the money that they're laundering, it's the weapons that they're selling. And this has been sort of the subject of the discussion. And, you know, like we hear like ostriches hiding their head. And, well, not us, not you and me, Glenn, but a lot of people like people still disillusioned that this conflict is about an actual real war it's not glenn what is it about in your opinion can you remind that listeners yeah laundering money distraction from the reality that uh, the economies in most nations are, are faltering and uh, the average uh, way of life is being challenged and uh you know we've said it many times most people in the world don't even have a clue what you where where ukraine is you know they they can't be bothered with what's going on it's just another uh, west induced uh, military incursion a problem somewhere and uh well russia it's it's doing what it can to protect itself and unfortunately you know there are uh, ukrainians too who who don't want that that problem they, they, you know people want peace in the world but the people who run the world they're the ones who profit off of this they don't want peace they want continuous problems wars and it's all covered up by the mainstream media propaganda muppets 
And uh, well, people that they're starting to lose their their um, their power, their uh, ability to uh, make the people believe in their false narratives. And so, as we say before, uh, before that the pendulum is starting to swing the other way, and it looks like the the good is starting to win. And now it's becoming uh, more of a mainstream acknowledgement that uh, many nations across the world do not share the West assessment of ongoing conflict between Moscow and Kiev. Ger German Foreign Minister Annalena Borbach admitted on a Tuesday, according to the minister, the conflict has garnered less interest in many parts of the world, and she has even been asked where Ukraine is located on her diplomatic trips. <laughs> Instead of focusing on Ukraine, people are blaming Western nations for abandoning them in their own hours of need and accusing the West of caring little about the rest of the world. Just like in our previous show, we talk about the fires and that they will have the fire departments that cut down and uh, the budgets there and everything's burning and uh, we have to bring extra people from all over the world, from US and from South Africa and from Europe to fight our own domestic fires. And she has heard all over the world Firstly, where were you when we needed you? And also, where is the Ukraine actually? The minister told in the event hosted by the private Brazilian university, Fondaco Gutulio Vargas in Sao, Sao Paulo. I just butchered that. Do not judge me. I do not speak Portuguese or whatever they speak in Brazil. Um, Glenn, that seems to be the thing uh, in the world now. But Let's get straight to the most important issues of the day. And brothers and sisters, we did cover a lot of it in a previous episode. We are in the Pride Month and we covered the Justin Trudeau speech and we actually covered a lot of the transgender ideology and what actually means for us is the society and as a globe in general and what are the origins of that, specifically the gender reassignment. But you can watch that episode. But now in the news, we know that the U.S. judge has blocked ban on transitioning kids. Judge Robert Hinkle declared gender identity was real in his decision preventing the Florida law from taking effect. Yeah, that's just in the state of Florida, champ. And you know what? Is this... it the George Soros's sponsor judge? Is that what one of them things is? Regardless, the most important thing is this only has to do with three children who were in the process of... I don't know, they call it transgendering. Transitioning. Transitioning. That's your favorite word. Trans, bananing. Uh, I don't, I have no clue, but, you know, it's three children. And then the law will, after these three kids, in other words, they can't ban it now that they've already started it. But that uh, resolves, the other children are not allowed to start it still. So all this is about three children. And by the way, there's a lot of people who are starting to come out and saying, say that a lot of this um, LGBTQS, 2SL plus, XYZ, 69, yeah. this, uh, you know, the gay BCs uh, community, uh, they would be fitting on the uh, autism spectrum, actually. Well, that's a known fact, right? This is what they, a lot of, uh, okay. Brothers and sisters, if uh, I guess we'll, we would have to do another show on that, but um, I, I, I don't want to beat that horse to death. <laughs> you can research it yourself. We have to do shows on our shows. <laughs> yeah, we have to do shows on our shows. <laughs> Uh, oh, but okay, let's let's continue this story. And but <laughs> in light of what we are discussing here, we may be considered as a hate group by some of the LGBTQ, but we're not, uh, brothers and sisters. We love all, including the people that transgender. In our biggest uh, our biggest argument here is, it's your choice. Be as you want to be, but kids they cannot choose. That's right. And the left, the woke, they're the ones who hate. What they hate is the truth. That's it. They want everybody to be in fictitious la-la land, just like them. If you think kid in the, is a kid cannot choose if he prefers a uh, carrot versus hamburger without you ex explaining to him what is better for him, right? Uh, and uh, the same way, if you explain to him, you know, you are the wrong gender, go cut your bits and pieces off, then yeah, you probably they are manipulating the kid or grooming the kid into something really crazy for him to happen later on in life. And again, watch the previous show. 
we cover a lot of that scientifically and historically. Now, advocacy group declares LGBT emergency. The human rights campaign claims the lives of gay and trans people in danger as a result of recent legislation. What what legislation is that, Glenn? That, that's in the West. That's in, in, in America they're coming out with this. And uh, I... I really don't know. I think that a lot of these people have endangered their own lives with this uh, rather invasive uh, surgeries and stuff. Um, they're also implementing their own mental illness. And Mr. and Mrs. Average is not doing anything to help these people out by, uh, how we say, not condoning what they're doing. They're actually uh, being taught that you should be more acceptable in this and that. And I, no, you don't want to be acceptable to uh, mental illness. You, okay. you know, we have to help these people. I think this is cool uh, that I'm going to cover it right now. I didn't. I wasn't going to do it. We're going to do actually different. We're going to do a special on that, like a Project Veritas. We're going to go undercover. But in, uh, you know, it's concerning all this legislation in schools to push back on all this drag queen, you know, reading hours and sex education and all those books in the libraries. So that's what this push about. And this LGBTQ community, uh, a plus community has been uh, hanging out pamphlets that uh, say an Americans fight back a guidebook for action. The group urges concerned readers to get involved in the local school boards and political scenes to push back at recent past legislation restricting sex education of young children, drag performances, what I said, directed at kids, and gender affirming, affirming medical procedures for minors, among other initiatives. Again, this is the innocent spot. This is, okay, we talk about this all the time. I don't want to talk about this, Glenn, but I, I, I feel like this is, needs to be mentioned. Uh, the, the family is being destroyed. The children will are taken away from the family. So, you know, and we talk about Yuri Bismanov and uh, Marxist communist and pagan agenda to remove God and to destroy families. So those kids could be easily manipulated on something they are not. And the idea is that uh, it's done for education centers, indoctrination centers, as we call them, because it's the easiest place. You send the kid there for eight hours because both parents have to do what? They have to go earn because it's so expensive. Gas is to like $2 a liter and the food is expensive. Rent is expensive. Mortgage is expensive. Everything's expensive. And uh, even if you send your kid and if you're wealthy enough and you're able to send your kid to a $30,000 a year school, Glenn, you know what happens, Glenn? I, I have a story. Uh, so here, the, 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 uh, the school called The Study, it's a girls' private school in West Mount. A parent send the kid there, 30 grand, and uh, the kid comes home and says, uh, Mom, we have an LGBT club. So the mom calls the school and says, I heard you have LGBT. She's not, she's not going to argue. She's just going to inquire. She calls and says, do you have an LGBT club? And they say, yes. And they're like, well, what's, uh, who, 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 whose initiative is that? You know, is it a student initiative? Well, it can't be students. You know, the students are not that uh, proactive unless maybe they parent somehow. Like, no, it's a teacher-driven initiative. So you're paying 30 grand, Glenn, to, for some teacher to teach your kids transgender things. And we know how, you know, those kids are not capable of making those choices just yet. They sh their minds are shaping. They're learning about things like, you know, it's a sex head. Uh, don't you want to try to teach your kid this stuff? Well, it doesn't even matter. Okay, let's move on. But there's a pushback in other countries because, uh, as we know, that uh, um, you know that agenda is being uh, trickled down from BlackRock. You know, we heard Larry uh, think uh, think saying, "Let's uh, uh, force people's behaviors," and they're not just trying to force people's behaviors here in the West. They also telling uh, you know how they force it. They forcing it by economical means, like you're not going to get funding from a group for this particular school, for example, or this particular other institution. And they also trickle it down to other foreign nations, specifically Uganda. And Uganda students, Glenn, uh, did you hear that story? Uh, Uganda students protest following U.S. threats over anti-gay law. Lloyd, what's that? What, what's this about? Yeah, Uganda has a different point of view on this community than the West wants. So the West now are saying that they're... they're they're going to uh, enforce sanctions on certain people. In other words, weaponize the U.S. dollar against other countries who don't want to push their left-leaning uh, wokeism agendas. That's, that's the student protesting. 
Well, and I think what was the was the president or prime minister saying? You you know that's that's your opinion, that's your culture. Do your thing. Don't don't get in into our stuff. And they go there protecting. So there, there is a pushback all over the world against this ideology of I don't know what you even call it demonic ideology because how else would you describe mutilating kids at a young age and. You know, if you watched our show again from two days ago, you'll see what we're referring to uh, because that's uh, specifically that's been going on that uh, gender reassignment experiment has been done. And by, by the way, brothers and sisters, there's no studies uh, regarding anything like, like that. And the ones that they do use to, um, you know, persuade parents this is the right thing to do, they're all skewed on, uh, there's literally no time frame there's not enough uh sample size uh to address any of the issues in the study regarding mental and physical well-being of the children as uh, who are affected by those barbaric uh, studies um and a lot of that stuff is being pushed through different institutions including Hollywood's, you know, Hollywood gets their funding from people like BlackRock and Vanguard and, you know, other financial institutions to do their bidding and they do a lot of the woke ideology movies with subliminal messages and everything else. But there are some outspoken people in the Hollywood thing, people like Mel Gibson and James Woods of the world and Roseanne Barr and, uh, you know, among other people. Do you like James Woods, Glenn? Yeah, I always liked his style of acting. He was good. And now, uh, you know, he's made his money and he's well known. Now he's using his platform to come out and expose some truth because he's saying it's gone too far one way. And uh, yeah, he's doing like what we're doing, champ. Just giving people a different point of view other than the mainstream media. And he's whacking Hollywood here saying that it's worse than your... Uh, most uh, demonic fears and and uh, we always said that hollywood was uh, a pedophilia and was controlled by people like uh, epstein and weinstein and all these crazy people uh, you know uh, you know uh, mel gibson doing on uh, four four part series on child traffic and child sex trafficking uh, James Wood said, multiply your worst fears by 100 when he was asked just a uh, question someone, by someone on Twitter. As someone who has enormous respect for talent as an actor, I'm curious how evil is Hollywood? And he said that it's worse than you think, right? Uh, speaking of Hollywood, it's not really Hollywood, it's Netflix, which is still a uh, competitor. Well, I guess that could be all part of the same. Uh, Netflix hit... Uh, delay uh, hits delayed due to writer's strike uh do you do you remember that why they were striking about yeah they they were uh actually they're trying to protect their own future income from the ai uh good luck uh they're all shut down it's uh that that's the union of course they go on strike when they are trying to protect their uh, revenue for the future and the AI is, uh, is going to be taking over a lot of their jobs. So a lot less fewer will be working. And they'll be working in conjunction with the AI. And uh, this is uh, another part of the downfall, we believe, in Hollywood. And, of course, uh, you know, like Disney and Netflix and all this, that we're all part of the, uh, the woke agenda machine. In the picture here is Lily Collins. I've actually been in a movie with Lily Collins. I've worked with her. Uh, I, you can call, you can say we are the best friends. <laughs> no, we're not best friends, but I actually met her father. This is Phil Collins's daughter. The cool thing is I sat next to Phil Collins for like an hour at the movie premiere of M Mirror, Mirror. And I spoke to him about many different things. And then Lily Collins come over and she's like, Hey, Alex, uh, you already met my father. And I'm like, Oh, <laughs> I was caught off guard. Cause I am Phil Collins's fan. Phil Collins, if you're watching the show, I'm sure you are watching the show because we are the bestest. Uh, what's up, man? It's been a while. I hope you're doing great. Um, the thing I, I'm going to clarify exactly what's happening. So the AI has the uh, uh, this uh, built-in prompt thing where you can actually write a, a first draft script 
and obviously it's not going to be perfect as you want it, but you write a script and the thing there, like I think the script, like if you write it for the movie feature or TV show, don't quote, don't quote me on, I don't know the prices, but it could cost anywhere between 50 grand to 200 grand uh, for the first draft. Obviously, if you have the AI do it, it's free. And then you can take this uh, first draft to the uh, writer for rewrite, which is like 20 grand, 30 grand, whatever, way cheaper. So the writer's obviously now like, uh-oh, <laughs> what's going on here? And they'll make all the arguments. And I do tend to agree with them. Uh, uh, you know, like, uh, oh, look at that. Look, look what we got. I'm putting you on the spot. This is our official mascot. This is Rambo. Uh, but back to the story. Uh, so the... Um, you know, I do agree that uh, we shouldn't let AI, because we use AI here to write descriptions, for example, or first draft descriptions for uh, for episodes, and sometimes it skews it uh, to the left of the dial <laughs> because you, you have to give it a specific instruction to skew it to the right of the dial. Even when it do that, it still uses a funny language. So, yeah, uh, we don't trust AI in here. So does EU. In EU is uh, seeking... Um, uh, crack down on AI, Glenn. Uh, did you did, do you guess to venture why is this more of that uh, Netflix? Let's worry about AI taking uh, our creative jobs, or is it really an economical issue? Mm, economical issue, and also they're worried that the truth is going to get out, and they're all going to be exposed. All the people who were part of this, they're all going to be exposed, and but it's happening. Speaking of exposure, uh. uh Pentagon hiding alien spaceships, whistleblower. I don't know. It's, it seems like it's more of destruction uh, to me uh, because especially right there in the subheader, U.S. Air Force veteran David uh, Grush insisted they, and I don't know how to pronounce his name, insists they exist, uh, though he has never seen the ETs or the craft themselves <laughs> so i don't know it's it's all he said she said naturally when you recover something that's either landed or crashed sometimes you encounter dead pilots so he's uh, spreading more news and there's been a lot of the news here and you can watch we do cover that you can listen to our interviews with uh louis Ige van de Tele on aerial phenomena where we cover the alien contact and uh with our man uh, Don Don Derry, Professor Don Don Derry from McGill, where he actually used to teach the course. I don't know if he teaches this semester on alien abduction and alien contact. And he wrote many, many books. We have his episodes here, a fascinating interview on alien stuff. And, uh, uh, you know, we're going to close the story with probably the most important thing that we can talk about. Uh, New York City installs free crack pipe dispensers. Uh, Glenn, let's go to New York City. Uh, no, no, thank you. You know what, champ? I bet you the majority of New Yorkers wish that they had a mayor like Giuliani, Rudolph, Rudolph Giuliani, back into the game to straighten things out. Yeah, he, he seemed to be the uh, force reckoned with when he cleaned up the New York City. And you can look at all the articles regarding that yourself. This is not the story for today. Thank you, brothers and sisters, again for tuning in and to Alex Sashro here at the Glenn Zone with Glenn Herring. Uh, Glenn, any last words for today? Well, with, with, with the G-Man and Rambo together, he uh, just wanted to get on camera like he does that sometimes. But uh, no, we're going to keep doing this. We're going to keep driving the truth home at times that it's completely necessary. Uh, I don't. We don't expect everybody to like what we say. And I don't want to be liked. But we should get be respected for at least coming out and exposing the truth. And uh, here's Glenn's uh, come out of closet speech. Brave of you, Glenn. <laughs> See you on the next one.